Hey, hello, crochet friends. Welcome to Crazy Cool Crochet. Today we're going to work on a crochet wrap shawl. And this is a, a very updated version of a shawl. There's nothing granny about this project. This is something that has a cool new look. This is easy to wear, super easy to make, and I'm sure you will really like making this crochet wrap. Now before I continue with the materials list, I want to remind you that if you need more detail, always look in the white space below the video. You have to open that up manually, and it depends on what kind of a device you're using. So make sure you open up where it says show more, or you might see a little V, a little arrow. Open that up and it will give you the detail as to how much yarn was used, what kind, where it was purchased, and um, where you can find the written pattern at crazycoolcrochet.com. And links for that will be in that description area below the video. Okay, now we are going to use Yarn B Yarntopia, which is a very, very lightweight yarn, and the color is white and ivory. We'll also need scissors, a yarn needle, and the crochet hook is a G or a 4.25 millimeter. So we will go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm going to be working just from a swatch because this does take a very long starting chain. So working from the swatch will show you how to work the stitches. Okay, so we are going to start with a chain of 225. So yes, that sounds like a crazy long starting chain, but we are working long way and working our way up. So it'll be a relatively short panel and we do need two, two panels identical. Okay, so start with your chain of 225. Then we're going to work one row of single crochet, starting in the second chain. So that's the first one, there's the second one. So just regular single crochets in each chain. At the end of the row, you will have 224 single crochets. And this will fit a small medium. For larger sizes, head over to the blog at crazycoolcrochet.com. Now at the end of the row, chain two and turn. Now we're going to work in extended single crochets. So we're going to start in the second space. So skip over the space right under the turning chain and into the next one work as for a regular single crochet so you've got two loops on the hook but now for extended single crochet you pull through the first loop and then pull through the last two loops that is an extended single crochet then we're going to chain one we're going to skip the next space and then into the next one extended single crochet start with two loops pull through one pull through two chain one, skip a space, extended single crochet in the next, pull through one, pull through two, chain one. So what this does is give you a taller single crochet and because we're doing the chain one this will give you a more open weave. Makes it nice and light. Skip the next space, extended single crochet in the next, chain one, and then continue across. At the end of the row, you should have 112 extended single crochets. So you're now counting those chains in between. At the end of the row of extended single crochets, you will skip the next space as usual. You did your chain one, and then into the very last space, there's your two strands indicating the last space. Do your last extended single crochet, chain two. So at the end of every row you will chain two and turn. 
Now we're going to skip that first extended single crochet and go into that chain one space for your extended single crochet. Chain one, skip the single extended single crochet, work into the space. Chain one, go into the next space. Chain one and continue across. That is the pattern. Very, very simple and yet so pretty. So now this is going to be your last space. So you're working next to that extended single crochet below, the last one. Work your extended single crochet. Chain two, turn, and continue. Now you do want to work a bit loosely for this pattern. And you are going to work 10 rows of the extended single crochet in your first color. So don't count that single crochet row. So you're going to do 10 extended single crochet rows and then we will change color. Okay, now after you have completed your 10th row of the extended single crochets, we're going to start the last stitch, two loops on the hook, pull through one loop. Now, to finish this off, we will work with the next color. Now pull through the two loops and chain two. That way you get a nice clean break here. And you can cut off, you should cut off, the first color. Leave a tail because we're going to need to weave that in at the end. And then you'll continue in the exact same pattern. Chain one, skip one. And continue across. Okay, now I wanted to show you one of the finished panels. So we did 10 rows of the white, 9 of the ivory or the second color, 8 of the white, 7 of the ivory, 6 of the white, 5 of the ivory, four of the white, three of the ivy, ivory, and then two rows of the white. So all together we will have 54 rows of the extended single crochet. Now you will notice that we are cutting off the yarn when we change colors. We do not want to carry it up because that will create a messy bulky edge and we don't want that. So at the end you will come back and weave in the white coming across this way to hide it, the ivory going across the ivory to hide it and on and on. You will also notice that we've got the ends being cut off on both sides. So we do have to do the same on the other side. So the design here calls for the rows to be minimizing the colors as we work our way up. We've got the broader bands on the bottom and the narrower bands on the top. So go ahead and do two identical panels and then we will put them together at the shoulder and across the arm. Now that we have completed both panels, we are going to seam at the shoulder. You want to leave a nice wide opening for the neckline. I'm using a 10 inch opening and you need your yarn needle, the length of yarn. And we're going to seam from the edge toward the neck edge. And I've used just a simple 
strand of yarn here to mark my neckline. Now you do need to make sure that you've got wrong sides facing out, right sides are touching each other. So I prefer to use a simple whip stitch starting at the edge. I like to knot the ends to secure it better. So all you're going to do is go around and around and around, around the two panels. Let's try to get those tails out of the way. And that's all you're doing. So I prefer to go under two stitches on each panel just to make sure you've got a nice secure seam and just keep working until you get to your stitch marker. And then of course tie it off, weave in that last tail that will be over here and then do the same for the other side. Okay, now that this is completed and we've sewn up the shoulder seams, that's all there is to it. And I'm realizing that this could also be called a poncho, a crochet poncho. The thing is that this is so versatile, I'm not even sure what to call it. So. Do me a favor, guys, and in the comments below, let me know what you would call this. Um, I know I called it a wrap and a shawl. Now I'm saying it's a poncho. <laughs> Honestly, this is such a different little cover-up. There we go. There's another name. Pullover? <laughs> I could go on forever. But you guys let me know below what you would call this. I call it cute. How's that? Okay, so thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next project. Those of you who may have noticed, um, I was away for several weeks. Um, I had been putting up pretty much weekly videos, weekly new designs. Um, I had some you know, personal issues, huge major life changes, and I had to step away for a little while, but now I'm hoping to get back to a regular schedule. So please, Subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have stuck with me all this time, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I, I wish you knew how much I appreciate you. We'll see you on the next project.